All right, everybody, welcome to the now completed outdoor kitchen. We have one more piece to put on here, which I'll do a, like a full walkthrough video. But this one, I wanted to do a pretty extensive uh, cost analysis. I spent uh, three or four hours last night just kind of going through. Uh, I didn't, I should have just kept the spreadsheet ongoing while I was buying this, uh, which would have been a, probably a smarter, smarter move to do if I had, had built a budget. Uh, but I wanted to take you through what it realistically costs to build. I mean, we, Mike, Wob and I were just talking about this, that this is a kitchen outside, uh, which has its own set of, uh, set of issues. But imagine that you were to put a kitchen together, you were to buy a kitchen and, uh, or have a, you know, buy all the products that go into a kitchen with appliances and all that stuff. You know, it would add up to, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what I paid in my last house, but it was, it was well over a hundred grand to do a, you know, remodel of the kitchen. The advantage out here is I didn't have any remodel and these prices don't include any, any labor. Um, so I, I do think this is DIY capable uh, with the exception of I wouldn't want to tackle the countertops without having, you know, Mike has extensive concrete um, uh, experience in building pools and things like that. So I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't have wanted to tackle that, that concrete countertop. So I would have added a significant, significant expense there by buying some, some granite. Uh, but this, you could do this yourself because uh, the hardest part of this was the, was the countertop. Uh, and so this, you could realistically buy these cabinets, buy the hardware, uh, and have us design it and have us ship it to your door. You could get it all the way done uh, and shim it and, and, and adjust the feet and level it. You can watch our videos and do that. Uh, and then just have a, you know, a countertop company come and come and do the countertops if you did some granite or something like that. Again, if you're going to do this, this concrete, uh, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend that you, you chase that. So I'm going to break it down. Uh, we're going to start with the the cabinet structure uh, and then we're going to go into i'll share with you these closets which i wouldn't recommend not very practical uh, unless you just had a, a unique situation like mine because that was the biggest cost of the whole outdoor kitchen were those or those those closet cabinets that we did uh, i'll break down the screws the knobs and inserts for the drawers then we'll get into concrete countertops uh, then I'll break down, uh, we had just a couple of trips, with a couple of little things from Home Depot. Uh, then the actual appliances, the hood, the grill, the Evo. Uh, then I'll talk about the outdoor audio system, uh, the fans and lighting. Uh, the one thing I didn't include in this was the outdoor furniture. Um, how do I say this? Um, you know, we were gonna build a house uh, down the street here, which we decided not to do. And so we'd actually bought this to be our forever furniture. So all the furniture out here is from Summer Classics. And just to, and I'm, I'm telling you this for, for perspective, for scale, if you were gonna build an outdoor kitchen, you want it to look something like this, or maybe better. Um, for the table and chairs, the chairs here, the, the bar stool chairs, the table here, the couches and all of that, and then these are all, you know, at Summer Classics, you have to do all custom fabric. I think it was around 50,000. Uh, and so remember, this is like ultra high end. I was buying this for the rest of our lives. Uh, I probably don't know what I would do it again, but this is all teak furniture. You could certainly get furniture for a lot less than what I paid. So I'm not including the outdoor furniture in this equation here, um, but if I'm telling you, go, go to Summer Classics or Gabby, if you ever go to one of their showrooms, I mean, it's best of the best, ultra, ultra high end. Uh, and uh, I think I sold my Tesla and bought the furniture for here. Uh, so I'm hoping you don't hold that against me. I'm just, I'm sharing that with those of you who are thinking about building an outdoor kitchen like this. So if I just, if I just add it up, so audio, fans and lighting, grill and appliances, the countertops, all the cabinets, including the two giant closets. Uh, so everything out here, as you see it, uh, if you were to say, Matt, I wanna buy this all, which we now sell pretty much all of this, uh, $81,750.89. Uh, I guess I built tax into some of this and shipping into some of this. So you're around, you know, 82,000 bucks, excluding the summer classics furniture 
Um, so let's say instead of you buying summer classics, you went to like Palm Casual or something like that, you'd still spend 20 grand on furniture. So you're about 100K you know, to build an outdoor kitchen like this. And uh, let's break it down. So I'm gonna go through each, each section. We're gonna walk around here and show you some of the stuff. So the outdoor kitchen part. So, so this, this section right here, uh, so if you were to buy this, so list price on this uh, is 23,472. So I'm, I'm giving you what, you know, if you were to buy this from OG, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of margin uh, or a lot of markup in the list total. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably getting in trouble for telling you this, but if, if I were to sell you this kitchen, you know, if you were to call me and say, hey man, I want to buy this, um, the cabinets would cost $14,417.92. Uh, is what it would cost. I think that included tax. Uh, and then you just have to, you'd probably have another couple of grand of shipping. So if you were to buy this L shape, the pilasters, the, I think this is a 18 inch cabinet, the Evo cabinet, the cabinet here for uh, the garbage, garbage can setup, the corner cabinet, the 60 inch grill cabinet, and then the other I guess these are 24 inch cabinets. The other pilaster, the toe kicks, all of the stuff in the back here. So all of the, uh, the trim work on the back, including the corner pieces, uh, that, that adds up to 14,000 bucks. So excluding the countertop. So just, just the cabinets. And so if you were to build something, and I thought about this a lot last night, I was sitting here thinking um, if I was to build this, like if you were to get some wooden cabinets, you'd probably pay 10 grand, you know, let's say eight to 10,000 bucks for some wooden, a wooden cabinet version of this. Uh, so you're certainly going to pay a 40, 50% premium. Um, maybe even more if you, you know, found some cheap cabinets. Of course, you could build it out of two by or out of uh, two by, you know, metal studs and then put hardy around it and then just do some like metal insert cabinets. You could probably do that for a couple thousand bucks or less, depending on how much the stone costs you. I mean, that, that's really common. You pay some company to come and they build you some outdoor kitchen like this for, you know, five, six thousand bucks. So you could certainly uh, do this with, you know, with, with other options, but this is like, the pinnacle. I mean, this is the best of the best. Um, now I have some, some, we'll talk about this in a minute, but I have some hateful drawer inserts, uh, but you have, you know, soft clothes, resin drawer faces and, and cabinet faces. Uh, and then you have the PVC uh, uh, enclosure or the PVC section uh, of the, the, I guess the, the boxes for the, for these cabinets. And so you know, you're talking about a solution that I mean, it's kind of dumb for me because I won't, probably won't be in this house for all that long. But this is one of those things that you, you know, you remodel your kitchen, you build an outdoor kitchen. Depending on the market environment of when you're selling um, this, you know, people understand how much this costs. You know, they, they hopefully their realtor will do a good job selling. I got my money back on the Harbor Hills house where I did the outdoor kitchen. Uh, I paid them. I want to say that that. The, for them to do the outdoor kitchen cabinets was something like it was around this size was was you know I think they charged me almost 40 um, so it was 30 and change to do their the, to do the cabinets because they they uh, built an install and it really was I just hated the process it was just you know hiring somebody to do it, it just wasn't it wasn't something that I, I I really liked doing so then a huge cost that you could take right off the top of this this outdoor kitchen so these were 17,000 bucks so this these two these are 70 uh, 36 inches wide you know 80 inches tall so I did this here and then the one down there and then you have to do the the big giant sheets of uh, of resin these are like probably fifteen hundred dollars I think is what would it said on there so this setup here was 17 grand. So you can take that off the top and now your outdoor kitchen becomes much more practical. Hopefully you have some sort of storage, some sort of closet. Maybe if you're designing your house, you're building your outdoor kitchen, you don't wanna do this. I, I didn't have a choice um, unless we built some sort of closets. It probably would have cost a little less to have something built, um, but I wanted it to match and, and I wanted to be able to take some photos and then be able to make an assessment. Now, I'm paying quite a bit less than that because I'm buying it at, you know, at, at cost because I'm a, I'm a dealer for this stuff. Uh, but I wanted to showcase 
what our you know what, what we could do uh, and so these are you know these are tall cabinets with you know some storage out here for the kids pull toys and junk like that uh, and so I wanted to have something um, and I wanted to I figured I'd make the investment because this is kind of a showroom a video showroom if you will list price on that is, is 28 grand I mean, if you were to buy it from me, I'd be selling it for 17, 17 two. Uh, and again, the reason why I'd be selling it a lot less than maybe what a installer would, you're going to take this and DIY it. You're going to do it yourself. I want to cut, cut out the complexity of this. You could easily watch Mike's video and install those. I mean, if you have some skill and bring a hand, have a buddy come over who does have a little bit of skill with a drill and, and you can install those yourself. So my entire NatureCast array or NatureCast setup here uh, would be 31608 uh, versus list price of 515. That's what our you know our retail pricing is going to be on the on the NatureCast stuff here, and it, you know just to, you know, to give you a, a rough idea what it would what it would cost. Then you need a bunch of screws, so I put everything on here. I wanted to add it all up. So you need a very specific screw. Uh, I plan to carry these. It's a soft wood and plastic wood screw. It's made out of T316 stainless and it's a square drive. Uh, and so I bought inch and a quarters, two and a halfs, three inch, and three and a halfs. Uh, so we needed eight 50 packs of the one and a quarter, two 50 packs of the two and a half, and just one pack, 125 pack of the three and three and a half inch. We didn't use very many of those. Um, and so you've got that and then the top knobs. So I bought uh, several different sizes. So five inch, six and a half, seven and a half, and 12 and five eighths. And these are all T304 from a company called Top Knobs that I bought all the knobs from my last several houses I've been in. Um, like here's, here's the 12 and, 12 and five eighths version. Uh, length of the uh, of the knob, so these you really want T316 out here because um, T304 will still sort of tarnish. Like this is all 304, um, but I wanted it to match all my 304 stuff, my grill and my my Evo, uh, and I couldn't find any nice like attractive looking uh, 316 knobs. And then the black ash inserts of the drawers from Hayfula, uh, we sell those as well. Those are 214 bucks, so 107 bucks each. Uh, the black ash is a premium over the, uh, I think the, uh, the regular birch that I have in the kitchen is, is probably like 10 bucks more for each of those. So not a huge expense. So we got 1100 bucks worth of parts that we needed. And then we did the countertops. Uh, so this, all this stuff, so I bought a kit from Counterform. The only thing that Counterform doesn't supply is the concrete. Um, so the concrete in this was like 150 bucks. We needed like Eight, how many bags? I think we did eight bags of concrete or something like that. Six, six or eight bags of concrete. And I choose, chose to do their Euro version. Uh, the Euro version is an inch thick versus like inch and five eighths. Uh, that'll reduce some of the weight because I knew that we would have this cantilever come out. Uh, so the counterform setup was um, a two microfiber applicator pads, one uh, thing of their M35 concrete sealant, one six pack of the Liquicrete. Uh, and uh, which is their additive that you put in the concrete. I think we only use six bags. Uh, two sets of Z-clips. Uh, then we needed the um, uh, mesh reinforcement, one roll of that. We had um, the square edge full package. So that's the, that's the snap away edge that, that was on here. Um, that one was, uh, was part of the package. That was 239 bucks. A sink form so that we could make the radius. Uh, and then shipping was like 160 bucks on that. Uh, add in the, the, the bolts and washers, add in these. So these are really cool. So this is from um, a company called Iron Supports that I found, just doing Google searching. Uh, and so we have one, two, three, four, five, six of a 14 inch by 20 inch, and then two of a uh, 10 inch by, uh, by 12 inch. Um, and so these are all what allowed us to cantilever our, our our um our countertop over out out you know past where the cabinets are uh 470 bucks for those so the the countertops in total and this so this is where you would really add an expense if you did a countertop this large and granite what do you think mike 12 grand something like that yeah. mm, it's about 80 bucks <laughs> it depends on what well, depends on the grade sure. that I, you chose i think we have i think this would probably be five six grand mm -hmm. You wish.
It was like nine at Harbor Hills. It was way smaller than this. Stuff. Yes, absolutely. It could be yeah. 12 grand, sure. Yeah. yeah. If you did quarts, yeah, quarts would be 12 to 15. Yeah. So it was, it was 1450 bucks yeah, to do to do to buy all everything to do the countertops. Then you have the appliances. So this is a huge expense. So 21,000 bucks worth of appliances. 7300 bucks for the Alfresco grill. So that's Alfresco 42 inch. Well, I'll show you that. I'm going to wipe it down here. I've been using it, as you can see. So I did a single sear station and then the two, um, two whatever, um, uh, ceramic brick versions. Rotisserie um, has the, um, the smoker add-on. Uh, and then I also bought um, an insert for, um, uh, they have a steamer insert that you can pull out well, you know, one of these sections and add it in. Uh, and the rotisserie rod is down below. So this is 7,200 bucks. I'm telling you this. So I had a Lynx Professional. The quality difference between this Alfresco and the Lynx is insane. So that's the Alfresco 42 inch. And then this is the coolest thing in the world. If you haven't seen one of these, you know, and I'm, by the way, I'm a dealer for both of these now. Took some convincing, but they're allowing me to do it. This is a 30 inch, an Evo 30G. Uh, it's a 30 inch cooktop. This is 50, 5,300 bucks, 5,400 bucks, something like that. Um, I'll tell you in a second exactly what it is. Uh, but this is, the, um, this is the insert version. They make a version that can go like on the countertop. They make a, you know, several different versions. They also make a cart modeled version. Um, but that's the, the Evo. And the Evo is $52.95. And then the grill insert was $839. Bucks. That's the insert that the grill sits in because you need the insert uh, because of the uh, PVC cabinets. You know, you can't, you can't have that kind of heat sitting on there. So you need the thermal barrier. $639 bucks for that fryer insert that I talked about. Um, the hood setup. So this is part of the reason why I decided to do the smaller grill. Um, the the 52 inch grill is like a couple thousand bucks more uh, than the, depending on which iteration you get between two and three thousand dollars more. Uh, but, but then you need a giant hood. Uh, and so that's a 48 inch hood from vent to hood. The hood is one of the most expensive things in this whole thing. It was 4,900 bucks, 4,896 for the hood. 1848 for the thing that Mike's working on now, which will be the <clears throat> the 36 inch um, cover for the finish the hood. So appliances were 21260. If you don't, I mean these are, I mean there's like was it Kalamazoo or something that's more expensive than Alfresco, but Alfresco Evo, these are like you know about as nice as you can get. Um, Heston maybe a little bit more expensive, but. In general, these are these are the best you can buy. So then you have outdoor. We had to do lighting and fans. These darn big ass fans have gotten crazy expensive. So I don't think I paid this much for them. I think they've gone up quite a bit in price. Um, but uh, the 60 inch two Haiku fans over there um, were 200 no, 2,049 a piece, and then this 84 inch was 2,500 bucks, which we've. We got to touch up because we hit with a ladder a couple of times. And then these are uh, DMF lights. They're 190 bucks a fixture. So I got 2,200 bucks worth of lights. So lighting and fans, which I think are super important down here. The lighting and fans are uh, like 8,900 bucks. One of the major expenses, which is important to me, which may not be as important to you, uh, is the audio equipment out here. So if you called me up and said, Matt, I want this exact audio setup. Um, it'd be 17 grand, 17,392, which is ridiculous. I, I get that. I'm only doing that, the audio stuff, because I can, um, and I wanna showcase what, you know, audio system could be uh, out here with, with all outdoor, you know, generally outdoor stuff. So I have the 65 uh, QNED 99 TV, 65 um, mini LED from, um, from LG. I hate LCD displays, if I, but out here with the glare, you really don't have a choice. So that's 1,700 bucks, 150 bucks for the bracket. The sub RCCs, which I think are too much money. They're, 20, they're, they're 1,300 bucks a piece. So there's two sub RCCs from Dyn Audio. The OW8s are the outdoor speakers. Those are 1,200 bucks. OW6s, we have two pairs of OW6s for another 1,000 bucks. Uh, two sub RS, the sub amps from Audio Control, RS500. I mean, that's, a, that's three grand for that pair of amplifiers. 
uh, $1,600 for the CI580, which is an amazing piece of equipment. That's the device where we can play different zones of audio out here. And then the CI8-150, which is way overkill for an amplifier. That's a huge cost prohibitive thing. I, I, I wouldn't recommend that you buy that amplifier. It's 4,600 bucks. And then all the different cabling adds up to 17 grand. I thought it was like 12, but... <clears throat> and again, I'm cheating there because I'm not buying any of that at, you know, at retail except for the TV. You know, I'm buying the cables, I'm buying the, the audio equipment, but if you wanted it and you wanted, you know, something at this level, it, it, I think we can do, we can accomplish the outdoor audio system here for six grand and, and kill. Um, by just choosing some amplifiers that weren't as ridiculous, maybe doing a blue sound node. I have three different zones of audio out here, which you really don't need. Uh, we could utilize your home theater receiver and tap into that and do it for, you know, four, five, six grand and do you know, an audio system out here that would kill. Um, this adds up because the subwoofers are so expensive, the subwoofer amplifier, and then that CI-8-150 is an insane amplifier. So that's how I come up with the 817589 to do this, to do this setup. And I'm gonna say this again, I've already said this probably too much. I'm sharing this with you so you know what something like this would cost if you're either aspiring to have it someday or do it. Um, you, you are in it for, you know, if you're building a kitchen, you're doing this outdoors, you're turning a, an outdoor area into a room with you know, high-end stuff. I mean, you're gonna spend about 100 grand to build your uh, outdoor kitchen. Could you do it for less? Oh. I've just told you 50 things that you could cut cost on and have a nice setup. Um, for me, I, I think that I'll get my money back on this. You know, I'd probably take the audio system out if I moved. Um, and but I think I would get my money back on this. And we could also negotiate. I could, you know, take the grill and put a less expensive grill in here or something. Uh, take the grill with me. Um, but you know, in general, I think that this has provided you know a, a significant amount of value and can have a realtor come over and give me their assessment. But I would think that this would, you know, it, if not add value, would certainly make the house sell much quicker um, having having something like this out here in, in, in the outdoor area especially in Florida with the pool and the setup anyway if you're interested in this kind of stuff um, our design team we designed this we it was awesome I mean Sean and Ed and um, you now Nathan uh, and Kyle we kind of put our heads together we designed this thing laid it out we didn't really make any mistakes uh, and I think we designed a better uh, system than what I'd bought when I had a, a company that did this for years. Um, so um, our design guys are so used to doing really sophisticated systems. So I'll be doing a walkthrough on this. We'll be doing a more you know, a beautiful looking B-roll to show you every detail of this thing in a, in a follow-up video. But I wanted to sit down and go over costs. I wanted to know what this costs so we could provide people with proper advice. I'm going to share the spreadsheet with with uh, with the design team so they have an idea, uh, and now you now you'll know you know kind of what something like this would cost if you were to DIY it. I would guess. What do you think, Mike? If you were to hire someone to do this, buff guess ten grand, maybe yeah. more. I mean, so you, yeah, you'd have, you know, if you were to pay someone to do this, yeah. but if you had someone on, you know, someone that was a handyman or something like a lot of this could be done for, you know, labor that wasn't, like you could pick and choose some of the things you wanted to do and not sure. do. Like I would have done, like if you didn't have you, I would have done, I would have done 50% of this myself. I would have done all the hardware. I would have done all the audio wiring. Yeah. I would have done the, I would have had someone do my hood. Um, I would have cut the cabinets. I would have leveled the feet and done all that stuff. I would have shimmed it and got it all set up. I wouldn't have done the countertops. I would have, you know, bought. I would have just bought some granite countertops, which is generally included in the price. Um, but in, you know, in general, this is a very doable sort of semi DIY thing as well. I think, and that was one of the questions I wanted to answer with us doing this. We're going to do this again in Helen, in a really ridiculous setup. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna do some crazy stuff. Uh, might be later this. May, it won't be certainly won't be this year. It'll be early next year. If you haven't watched the series, we did a eight nine part series of every step, every square inch of this. The Helen one will probably do a little bit more condensed because now we know um, there's really only a couple of mistakes we made. One, we used a indoor adhesive, not an outdoor adhesive. 
other than that, everything is pretty good. And we made some selections on how we did our our um, how we did our, our trim around the bottom. That you know, NatureCast made some suggestions that we could consider doing it a little differently. But I'm super pleased how it turned out, and. Um, I think um, and I'd do it again. You know, in the next house, I'll put one of these in. It's, it's, um, it completely changes the whole look and feel of the outdoors. And then, I mean, this is just something I use a lot. So um, I value it a lot. So and anyway, thanks for watching. Hit us up, Obsessed Garage. Uh, I guess you could email me, Matt, at ObsessedGarage.com or uh, design at ObsessedGarage.com and we'll uh, get you in the queue and help you design your system. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.